Hello, Scott Allen Moffat, the actor's dialect coach here, and in this tutorial video, I'll be teaching you the basics of a Russian accent. The Russian accent is a staple in our films and TV shows, and is therefore incredibly valuable for any character actor to have in their repertoire. This simple starter guide will introduce you to some of the basic rules to follow when learning the accent, resulting in a version that's perfect for auditioning. Anytime you explore an English as a second language accent, like Russian, you must consider first your character's proficiency with the English language. Has your character spoken English for many years or only learned it recently? Did they learn it in childhood or as an adult? Do they speak it every day or infrequently? Decisions like these will affect the accent decisions you make, just like it does for real-world speakers. And they are, indeed, choices. In real life, ESL speakers are often inconsistent when speaking English. They may speak a word a certain way in one moment and pronounce it differently the next. This comes from the fact that many features of the accent are really just unintentional mispronunciations, and adjusting how frequently we choose to utilize these mispronunciations can affect how thick the accent will sound. But while inconsistency is common in real life, we as actors must endeavor to make consistent choices so that our performances are repeatable. Let's begin by covering some of the most common sound shifts you'll want to try on when switching from a general American dialect to a Russian accent, starting with the vowels. If your own accent isn't American, the shifts you need to make here may vary. In our first vowel shift, the short I, I, as in kit, may move to a long I, E as in tree. So kit now sounds like kit. As always, with each of the shifts, I'll give you an example tongue twister featuring the target sound and give you some space to repeat it after me. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video as you go through the rules. Here's our first tongue twister. Bring in six images of the big sheep. For our next vowel shift, E as in dress, may move to a short I, I, as in kit. So dress may now sound like dris. Here's the tongue twister. Frid the elegant elephant was fid lemons in bid. Next, the front vowel a, as in trap, may move to e, as in dress. So trap may sound like trep. Here's the tongue twister. The fit kit hid the bit in dinst. Next is the open back vowel a, as in lot, which is much more lip rounded in Russian, closer to o. So now it sounds like lot. Focus on rounding your lips as we do the next tongue twister. I thought of calling Sean this full. The next vowel shift is my favorite. The short U, or U, uh, as in foot, may move towards a long U, U, as in goose. Therefore, foot may now sound like foot. It may feel a bit over the top on this tongue twister, but in moderation, I promise it'll sound okay. The cook put away the book after he took a look. For our next shift, a, uh, as in strut, may move to the back-rounded vowel o, oh, perhaps as in thought. So strut may sound like strot. This sound can also change a lot based on the spelling of the word, so don't feel limited to my suggestion here. Try out different changes based on what feels right to you. Here's the tongue twister. My brother stumbled into a clump of shrubs above us. Our last vowel shift is really two in one. The vowels A, as in face, and O, as in goat, are two-part vowels for Americans. A, O. They have a beginning and an end. The Russian speaker may cut these sounds in half, resulting in a sort of pure, punchier version of the vowel. So face may sound like this, and goat may sound like got. Here are two tongue twisters to demonstrate. For the A vowel, as a favor, my favorite flavor was placed on my plate. And for the O vowel, it's only a stone's throw to Rio. 
And that's it for the vowel shifts in this tutorial. Again, this guide is not all-encompassing, and you may hear other sound shifts when listening to real-world example speakers, but the ones I've outlined here should be enough to get you started. Now, let's explore the consonant shifts. Our first consonant change is, more often than not, one of the most difficult ones for Americans to accomplish. For every R sound, we may hear a trilled R, R, where the front of the tongue rapidly flaps, commonly referred to as a Spanish R. If this is difficult for you, try a singular tap instead, closer to a soft D sound, so a word like trep may instead just be trep. Here's an example tongue twister. The enriched rich red rose grew rotten. A little tip here, for those who find this difficult, use the practice phrase crispy cream, replacing the R's with D's, very intentionally at first, kadispi kadim, and then work your way up to a more rapid pace, kadispi kadim, kadispi cream, kadispi cream, crispy cream. Notice how the R's now sound closer to a bit of a trill. At the end of the day, if you can't find this sound or want something more subtle, Try slightly swallowing your tongue on R sounds. So, trap may sound like trap. Crispy cream may sound like crispy cream. Your tongue twister may now sound like the enriched rich red rose grow rotten. Next, many consonant sounds in a Russian accent might be devoiced, losing any activation of the vocal cords, including Z's and J's. I'll demonstrate the Z sound, which may simply shift to an S on our next tongue twister. The Wies Kids Sit was recent. Notice how we pronounce the letter S as Z's in English many times. Not so in this accent. Everything may feel like a true S. Next, listen to how our hard J sounds, J, become softer CH sounds, CH. On this next tongue twister. Cherry chomped the chuch and churi. Inarguably one of the most popular sound shifts for a Russian accent, W sounds will often change to V's. Here's a fun tongue twister. Which volley will want to quit? Our next shift is super common for ESL speakers. TH sounds, where for Americans we'll often get our tongue under our teeth, the, will often change to a T or a D sound. So a word like there may sound like der instead. Make sure the sound is soft off the back of the teeth, the, not super punchy, the. Here's a tongue twister. Give those things to them or they will go without. Our next shift is super important for the general posturing of the dialect. Every L should feel dark, almost swallowed in the mouth. Oh. In our tongue twister, it may feel like you're swallowing every single word. Lily's light linen tablecloth cleaned nicely. For our last one-to-one -one sound shift, Every H at the start of a word should happen with your tongue touching the soft palate in the back of the mouth. <sighs> to me, it feels like a cat hissing <sighs> or clearing phlegm from the back of your mouth. <sighs> Here's a tongue twister. Hippy hippos held their heads high. Now that we've finished exploring the one-to-one -one sound changes of a Russian accent, let's explore its musicality. The Russian accent often sounds much deeper compared to most accents of English. In addition, the general resonance of the Russian speaker might feel more retracted towards the back of the mouth, resulting in a sort of darker sound. Coupled together, it can feel like you're swallowing everything towards the back, towards your throat. As with many ESL accents, speakers will often misplace emphasis within a word or phrase. For instance, the word mistake may sound like mistake. Speculate could sound like speculate, etc. 
There's no right or wrong here. Just be careful of overdoing this feature, or you'll start to sound like you're doing a caricature of the accent rather than anything authentic. Russian speakers often eliminate the articles a and the when speaking, so the sentence I'm going to the store to buy a cucumber may instead sound like I'm going to store to buy cucumber. Again, this can feel a bit over the top if utilized too much, though it is a popular trope amongst writers. Finally, you may hear a certain increased nasality in the accent, especially after nasal consonants like n and m, especially when preceding a short vowel. For instance, a word like beneath may sound like beneath, never may sound like never, etc. Now that we've talked about many of the important features of a Russian accent, I want to demonstrate it for you. Listen for the features we've talked about to hear them in context. And don't worry, I've also provided some real-world example speakers in the text below for you to listen to. Now here's a brief excerpt from Shakespeare's Hamlet in a Russian accent. Speak this speech, I pray you, as I pronounce it to you, creepingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it as many of your players do, I had as leaf the town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and, as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Be not too tame, neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with the special observance that you o'erstep not the modesty of nature. For anything so or done is from the purpose of playing, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold, as for the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her feature, scorn her own image, and the very edge and body of the time, his form and pressure. A Russian accent can be very difficult for English-speaking actors to perform naturally, without going over the top. That said, don't be afraid of starting with an extreme version of the accent and then pulling back over time. Practice all the sound shifts on your own text, then imagine the thickness of the accent existing on a dial from 1 to 10. What happens if you turn the dial down a little bit, then a little bit more? As in life, you'll encounter characters who exist at every point on the dial. There is no right or wrong in regards to pronunciation when performing ESL accents, only how many features may sneak through to the English pronunciation. When in doubt, opt for simple choices that suggest the Russian accent without going over the top. You may also see audition breakdowns asking for Eastern European accents, and in those cases, utilizing a very light version of the Russian accent will often produce acceptable results. I've provided some links to example speakers below. Be sure to give some a listen to hear the accent demonstrated properly. If you need further help, feel free to reach out for private coaching. Be sure to check out some of my other tutorial videos for basic guides on various dialects and accents of English. Thanks for watching.